right, today we're going to be uh, starting off the week talking about the Vittoria Hermansen card. I'm going to start from the bottom of the prelims and work my way up. So by the end of the week, Friday evening, it should be Vittoria Hermansen, that fight itself. So first on the prelims, we've got Lewis Smolka at 16-7 and 7 against Jose Quinones at 8-4. and 4. And this is going to be a bantamweight fight. So first we're going to start talking about Smolka. His last fight was against Casey Kenny, he was a very good fighter. I don't know if anyone saw the Nathaniel Wood fight, I think it was just last month. That was a, I think, fight of an night bonus. And I don't think anyone would argue with that. Very close decision, could have gone either way. Personally, Nathaniel Wood being English, I was hoping he would win, but there you go. So like I say, it's a submission in round one. But what I thought was main, mostly interesting about that is... Smoker was throwing a lot of body shots. He was going in on the body shot, but it was sort of, you know, where his head's going forward with it as well. And he just, every body shot he landed, and he was landing them, don't get me wrong, and he did have power, but he was eating a two or three shot combo to the head every time. And by the end of, well, before the end of the first round, he just couldn't take any more of them. So he eventually got taken down. It's a bit of shuffling on the floor. Uh, on the floor, a few position changes, and then he eventually succumbed to a mounted guillotine. He gets kept, like I say, nothing to be ashamed of. Case again, he's a very good fighter, but I would just question the body sh the over reliance on the body shots. I don't think I saw one one kick in that fight either, which is just it's mixed martial arts. I mean, leg kicks, every the calf kicks become a big thing this year, and I think he would have massively benefited from that. So I'm just going to be putting his stats up in the corner, going to be just there, so you can see there. So he's looking at 7 wins, uh, sorry, 16 wins, 7 knockouts, 7 subs and 2 decisions. So he's not one for going the distance at all. And his 3 losses, sorry, 7 losses, uh, he's had 3 submission losses and 4 decisions. So moving on to his uh, next fight, well, second previous fight, it's against McDonald. Uh, that was in October 2019, so for over a full year ago. And what became very apparent early on in this one is he he's willing to take a hit to get hit. The same in the Kenny fight. He knows he wants to land and he doesn't mind if he gets hit back, which is admirable in a way. Again, no kicks at all, as far as I could see. I mean, I only watched it earlier this morning just to refresh myself. I mean, one or two kicks. I appreciate it didn't go a full round, but... You'd think he'd have thrown a kick or two in there. He, he ended the fight towards the end of the first round. It was a big left hook. Got him up against the cage and just blitzed it till the ref pulled him off. Very impressive win. Round one finish, which is becoming a bit of a pattern with this guy. So his next fight is uh, Ryan Schnell, I believe, uh, June 19. Schnell just outpaced him from the start. Sparker came in. As far as I could see, he was just looking for a bit of a brawl. And he was getting pushed to the outside. He had no octagon control at all, which is never what you want to see. He got taken down relatively easily. He did fight off a guillotine, but then he lost to a triangle when he reversed position. Which, I mean, you see people do every now and then. and Well, similar to Devin Clark at the weekend, he just got triangled out. So moving on to Jose Quinones, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, his record is eight and four, two knockout wins, one submission, and uh, what's that? Five, five decisions, sorry. And his losses, two knockouts, one submission, and one decision. I'll be putting all his stats up in the corner just there. It, now his last fight was against Sean O'Malley. I mean. Everyone's heard of Sean O'Malley, he doesn't really need much introduction. But this was obviously before the Cheetah Vera fight. And I think Cheetah Vera really brought home that he might not be as good as everyone thinks. Don't get me wrong, he's still very good, but again, time will tell if he improves and if he bounces back. I think he's looking at fighting on the February pay per view. It might be the McGregor Poirier card. I haven't quite, not 100% on that one yet. The main thing with the O'Malley fight, as regards to Quinones, I didn't see him land one punch. I think he might have, straight out of the blocks, O'Malley, as he does, 
big long stance, comes running across her ring, dropped in with a body kick, and that just set the pace of the fight. Obviously, it wasn't a very really long fight, but that set the pace. So he's dropped with a front kick, and then it was just getting peppered until he took a big one, and then the TKO loss was always going to come quite quickly after that. Moving on to the second to last fight, so this is in September 19, Huachin, I believe, a Peruvian gentleman. I don't know a great deal about him, I think he's out of the UFC now. I did manage to find the fight, and I have watched it, it was a unanimous decision win. And if anyone did see it, then you can't argue with that. It was in Mexico City, he was a big hometown hero that night. But he, he got a knockdown quite quickly, and... You could really see the difference in height. I mean, he's only five foot eight, sixty nine inch reach, but it looked much bigger than that. Excuse me. So he was just like I say he he likes to bounce around the outside. He's in and out, darting in and out. Uh, honestly, if this bloke, t if a, this guy who fought who actually turned up against O'Malley, he'd have performed a lot better. But I think O'Malley's star power sort of got to him a little bit he landed a lot of heavy leg kicks in the first round and then when it came to round two it was he took him down his, his takedown in round two it wasn't the best he, he held him down for quite a while but he really he struggled to advance position i think it took him about a minute to get to half guard and i wouldn't say he landed anything of great significance but then in round three, he really landed and landed quite successfully. And um, I think he should have finished that really. He probably had had it in him to finish it, but he knew he'd won the first two rounds, so he coasted to the decision. So again, unanimous decision, solid performance. There you go. There was a lot of good elbows as well off the ground in round three. We kept him, you know, refs are like when we see a few too many elbows. They're more likely to pull you off and wave its punches. So, his ne his next fight uh, was Wood Nathaniel Wood, young English gentleman, March nineteenth. I'm a big fan of Wood myself, as I'm of the seventeen English fighters in that we have in the UFC. We could be doing to see a few more, and I think we will over the next couple of years. So he looked again. This one was a UFC London fight night. And if anyone's seen them, they really do get behind the English guys. Uh, so, Cronones, he looked very nervous coming into it. He, he, he could, you he could feel it, but he knew he wasn't, everyone wanted him to lose. And I think that got to him a little bit. He, again, he made, it, he made it through the first round. There was a lot of, he had a decent takedown defence from Wood to start with. But that collapsed quite quickly. His own takedowns never really looked like they were taking off anywhere. The first round, personally, I'd say Wood took it, but you could well make an argument that Quinones did take that round. And in the second round, it just wasn't happening for him at all. It was a case of a lot of position changes on the ground. Kenny, uh, sorry, Wood took his back, and then the rear naked choke was coming after that little bit of hand fighting, as you usually see. And then that was all that. So my pick for this one, I'm going with the favourite. It's Lewis Smolker. He's at minus 130. I'll be putting the odds up just here so everyone can see. And I just feel like they're both coming off in the last three. They're both coming off two losses and a win. But I feel like Smolker's got more urgency about him. And if he puts his foot, foot on the gas... He can get him out. I can't see this one going the distance, and I haven't seen I haven't seen a betting line for the fight not to go the distance. But I think that might be worth sticking a few quid on if anyone sees that knocking about on the various sites used. The betting line I've got today is from my bookie, and I appreciate that's an American site. So I will be posting on my Instagram the bets that I'm putting on. They're off Bet Three Six Five, so obviously you've got the fractional odds that we use over in the UK. So, anything else to say on this one? Hmm. It's a bantamweight fight. Uh, no, it should be a good start to the evening, though. I can't see it going, like I say, very surprised it goes the distance. If I had to be more specific, though, I'm going smoker by 
I have a TKO in round one, a uh, submission in round one, as in he'll knock it, he'll knock him down, beat him up a bit, he'll give his back, and then he'll get the choke off from that. So that's going to be the first fight, and the next fight is Benitez and James, which will also be up today. And then tomorrow I'll be doing the next two fights along, and we're just going to progress through the week like that. Saturday I'll do a roundup of everything through the week. Obviously, if people miss weight, you never know with COVID at the minute. We could have a late replacement. Fights could drop off. But I'm hoping everything stays as it is. And obviously, the betting lines might have changed on Saturday. And I never put anything on till the Saturday. I will say at this point, the Saturday in the day, I don't think it's worth messing about early in the week unless you see something that looks too good to be true. So, yeah, I will see you all hopefully quite soon and then look forward to seeing you as well for the rest of the week as always please feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video tell your friends tell your neighbours tell the bloke at the chippy my instagram account's going to be coming up just up above here and i hope you all have a great day